Hi guys, today we are going to talk about microcode steps, machine code instructions, immediate values and the program counter. We'll dive into it. Let me switch the screen. Here we go, that's my script, can go to the side. We have seen the basic events in a CPU are very tiny couple of control signals that are being uh, set and reset and stuff gets transferred from one component to another. So when we want to uh, put the contents of register A into register B that takes us one micro step. But when we would like to have something out of memory for example, into register A, we cannot do that in one microcode step. We need two steps at least. So, let's see. Um, what would we have to do to obtain something from memory, pointed to by register B, and we want to put that contents of memory into register A. So, let's uh, go to memory and put something at location 20 for example FF there we go remember the location 20 we are going to put 20 into register B because register B is going to point us to the memory namely to the location of which we want the value to be in register A so now what we have to do is put the contents of register B into the MAR, the memory address register. So what we have to say is register B out has to be 1. There we go. And MAR input has got to be 1 as well. So on the next clock pulse register B will be put into the MAR. So here we go. Now the MAR contains 20. Let me reset real quick. B O these two to zero. MAR I to zero. What we have to do now is set register A to receive content. So RGA O is one. Uh, sorry, input is one memory output also should be 1. So we are going to read from memory into where, we, where are we? Here in register A. So keep your eyes here. I'm going to give a clock pulse. And there we go. We read the value from memory into register A. So what we did was actually this. And this is the notation you should remember for microcode steps. We did two microcode steps. The first one um, took care of register B putting its output on the DAB. And at the same time, the memory address register took its input from the data address bus. We call that a micro step, micro step one. Then we have a separation character. Remember this because it's important for the language definition file we come to discuss later. In the second micro step, micro code step, we set the memory for output and register A for input. So that concludes our loading operation from a value from memory pointed to by register B into register A. I hope that's clear. So we move on to the next topic. So we've seen how to uh, load something from memory and it took us two microcode steps. Machine instructions almost always have two or more micro steps. Now what would we have to do when we want to load a component with a specific value, not from another component, but 
with a specific value of our own choosing. The answer to that lies in what we call immediate instructions and immediate values. I'm going to try to show you. In an immediate instruction, the value is contained in the instruction itself. Now let's say I want to put the hexadecimal value of 57 into register A. Then we are going to see what the program counter and the instruction register has to have to do with that. Um, we mentioned the program counter in the first video. It's uh, part of the overall picture. It's here. And the program counter is connected to the memory. And you can read something from the memory addressed by the program counter and deposit it into the instruction register. There it's input for the control unit, mentioned here. And the control unit decides what to do. In an emulator, the emulation program is in fact the control unit and it decides what to do. Um, we, are, we will show how we do that today. And that's this picture. Immediate values in the instructions. So I just sneak in two topics in one video. Immediate values and instructions and the program counter and things like that. We want to put value 57 into register A. In the meantime, I'll reset the emulator. Oops, my bad. There we go. We want to put value 57 into register A. Let's say the opcode, the opcode is shorthand for the operation code, the machine code instruction, um, that it is 10. It's not in this thing, but let's say that it is. In that case, we would code that instruction in memory as 10 57. I'll show you how to do that. We start at address 0, then 57. There we are. We coded our first instruction. Now I cannot show you um, what this is going to do because I did not code it in the language definition file yet, but I'll show you that in the next part of the video. Um, we have the instruction, namely 10, and we have the immediate value, 57. So this machine code instruction consists of two bytes. In the microcode, first we have to obtain the instruction. Later on we will see that this sequence of events, two microcode steps, are the same for all instructions in sepsis. What happens? We put the program counter on the DAP. We read it into the memory address register. That takes care of the memory address register pointing to the point in memory where the program counter is pointing. Then we read um, that into the MAR. We have read it into the MAR and then we set the memory for output and this time we are going to read what comes from memory into the instruction. Where are we? Ooh, lost one. Uh, we are going to read that into the instruction register. This is a new one. CE. CE means count enable. That means in that same clock pulse that the program counter is being incremented by 1 so that it points to the next memory location, in our case the 57. And now we have to read from memory, from the address the program counter points to, and we have to read the memory into register A. So then we have put value 57 into register A. And don't forget, the program counter, which should point to the next instruction, still points to the 57. So we have to 
in that same micro step do a count enable. So the instruction pointer or program counter points to here, to the next instruction. Well, this went a bit fast uh, perhaps, but I will show you in the next part of the video where I have prepared a language definition file. So guys, I've prepared a language definition file for the instruction we talked about. It's going to read, or put, I should say, put the value 57 into register A. The opcode will be 10, the value will be 57, and this is the microcode that's going to take care of that for us. I'll show you the language definition file, and it looks like this. Everything that starts with a hash is comment, empty lines are comment, so I'll skip those. This is one instruction uh, that needs to be in there, because otherwise I get all kinds of nasty messages. Um, and it's good to have one uh, knob, no operations anyway. Here you can see that the first two microcode steps that I mentioned earlier are the same for every instruction. And actually, it's the complete no operation instruction. It just reads the next instruction. But the topic is the load immediate in register A of a certain value. This is how I code my comments for instructions. And here we are. Instruction with opcode 10 is called Leah. It has some value, this is not significant, but here's the upright slash. And that denotes the start of the microcode steps. The microcode steps here are the first line here, the first two, one and two. And these two, of course, are microcode steps three and four. You can uh, make it yourself, stop the video, discuss and um, look at it. I'll show you how it works. The language definition file has been read in by Sepsis, it always does that. Um, and we are going to make our own pro our first program now. Program counter always starts at zero, so I'll start my program at zero as well. We put into memory the opcode 10 and the value 57, as earlier. There we are. Now we can press the pulse as much as we want. Nothing is going to happen. Perhaps I'll make that better in future uh, versions of the program. But in this case we have to use the S for step. We're working our way up. Um, when we press S, one step is being performed. So what we are going to expect when I press S and enter that the program counter is output on the DAP and read into the memory address register. They both contain zero, so no difference will be observed, except that um, the step counter is now two. Step counter now points to this step. Um, so we are going to perform another step and that means that the program counter now is 1 because of this count enable. And also the instruction register has been loaded because of this memo and this in read. Memory out, instruction register in. So we now have a 10 in the instruction register so the computer knows what to do. The next step is from this location 1, where, as you remember, the value 57 is stored. We are going to, um, to put uh, uh, address number 1 in the MAR, that's the next step, there we go. And now we're going from memory address 1, uh, read into register A, the value that is there, step, and have also your eye on the program counter, because it's going to be increased as well again, and register A should contain the value. Here we go, 
register A now contains 57. That's the purpose of this instruction. And the program counter is nicely pointing to the next instruction. This concludes the example of this definition of my, our first instruction and our first executable program. Of course, as you understand, the benefit of doing it this way is that the program uh, takes care of its own control signals. The emulator, depending on the instruction and the microcode steps, will set the control signals and reset them as needed. So we don't have to do that ourselves.